In Affinity 3, you can use the divide feature to create all kinds of unique designs such as this. And let's just go right back to the beginning with a very basic shape. This is for PC or Mac. Basic rectangle. Just create a rectangle. It's a vector design and you can see I'm in the vector studio. Now you don't have to do this in the vector part. You could use the pixel. All you need are the operations up here and you can add those by customizing this toolbar. Okay, let's just go with the vector though. And I'm just gonna create a very basic line. That's all you need to do if you want to divide a shape like this in half. So just go over here, pen tool, just click there. And I'm just gonna click and click here. And you can see as I do that, I can hold down the shift, get a straight line, straight down like that. And you can see at this point, of course, it isn't halfway, which is not very useful, but you can just drag it along and it will position it nicely in that central position if you've got this option, view and snapping, really useful. I've got everything snapped, enable snapping, and it's just in the center. So once you've done that, all you need to do then is just go over here, move tool selected there, just drag over both, or go to the layers panel, which you can find in the window menu and general, just down there, as most of the panels there, swatches, etc. And now just apply this. This is it, the divide and click there. Once you've done that, you can see now you've got two halves and you can of course separate them. Set that one and you can change the color. Simple as that, super quick, super easy, just to split a shape in half. And you can do this of course with all kinds of different shapes. So let's just set something else now. Let's just go and create a circle say. So I've got a circle here and now what I can do, I can again create another straight line. So I just go over here again with the pen tool and I can click here and click here. And you see, I've got that. Well, I can also just use the divide feature with this. I can just then break this apart this way, but I can actually do more than that. I can, of course, with the move tool there, I can just simply hold down the alter option key and drag, or you could use the move and duplicate feature. If you press return on the keyboard side, so do that and you can see then you can use that to create additional lines but i'm just going to quickly create a couple of these lines and simply just drag and have to actually select the path and then just drag and drag like that and you can see you can create all kinds of lines like that across the image but you can also divide this now circle into those shapes that one that one that one that one by again going to the move tool and drag in over all of the shapes. And if it haven't been selected, then you can obviously do it in the layers panel. Quite often, sometimes I suddenly find there's a shape or something not selected. And again, you can just go here to divide, just click there. And you can see now you've got this, you've got them all separated. So I can just click on that one. And again, swatches, I can just go here. So you can set different colors for all of those if you want. And I'm just gonna go down there and like that so super easy to divide it and of course once you've done that you can then just simply move them away you don't have to so you could create an interesting sort of like slightly odd thing might certainly select the actual light shapes it's quite easy to select the other one by accident but you could do it go over here in the layers make it easier to actually select them i'm always doing that selecting the wrong one and then just go back there again you see i've got that one selected when i don't mean to and again select that one and just get there so you can break it apart and also make it look a far more abstract shape and design like that. But you can also extend this even further with sort of, let's say again with rectangles. But this time I'm gonna go with rectangles and I'm just gonna add lots of them. So just rectangle, just a basic rectangle. You could do this of course with stars, you could do it with circles, any kind of shapes. So you can do this just, create a complex design like this. It's not that complex, but you could see, just create multiple ones. You go over top of each like this, very rapidly. And with that, I can then select all of them. So with them all selected, I can again use this feature, the divide feature. Just go up here, just click, just click that. And now it's divided all of those curves into all these different components. And you can see now you end up with 
far more loads of shapes. And again, exactly the same. Don't have to recolor them, of course. You could do many other things. So like that, you could select different colors to create some interesting sort of designs like that. Also, you can select all of them like that. Just drag over, so all selected, or perhaps just different ones. Don't have to have them all. And then just click effects down here, bottom of the layers panel here, click effects. And with that, you can go with 3D. Let's just push the 3D there. And you can see then you get this lovely sort of padded design effect, which I always really like. And the great thing about it is you can go here with the 3D selected. You, this is the options that all been used. So radius, you can also go for soften. Now, sometimes soften doesn't have much of an effect there, but depending on like the profiles you can select, so you go for something like that to create interesting design, maybe like that, or that one, and so on. So you can see, you can create some quite interesting designs just with that. And then, of course, close. You can also cut text apart as well. So I've just created some text using the artistic text tool, just there. And I can now simply add a line, just as before. So just go up here, and pen tool, click here, and here. Doesn't matter particularly where I'm going to divide it. You could, of course, carefully make certain it's half and half. And then with the move tool there, select that and that. Select both of them. So you can see they're selected. And again, just go up here and click divide. And now you can see you get a lot of, <laughs> lots of lines and things, which you may, and curves and things. Well, what you can do is you can now select that one. So let's just select that and select that one. Maybe select colors there you can go obviously through all of the different swatches you've got and these are the colors and you can see i could go with that and again create an interesting design there and maybe down there go with that color and blue and so on you can see you can create an interesting design and again these individual lines of course are actually also in the, in the mix as well so you can if you want recolor those as well or just drag them out, maybe create a nice abstract design like that. And you can see then you could create something like that. Just select that one, move it there and so on. You could see you can build up all kinds of complex designs with these broken text designs. So let's just drag over that and delete that. You can also use the same approach to split text apart vertically. Let me show you how quickly. Vector Studio and just go here and use the pen tool again. And I'm just gonna click here and drag down there, hold down the shift, get a straight line. And I've got the straight line. I could just now, if I use the divide feature, split the T away from the EXT. But also with the text, let's just select the text there. This is obviously here, text selected. I can add a stroke to it. Unfortunately, for some weird reason, and I've never understood why, there is no option for stroke here with this. <laughs> you think they would add that, but it's not. But you can do it. Just go here to the rectangle tool or any of the other shapes, and you'll notice then you've got this option. And you've got here a stroke. And you can just set that. And I'm just going to set it to red. And also I'm going to set the size. So let's just increase that. And you can see get something like that. And I'm just again, just going to avoid, because I don't want anything cut off by accident. So I'm <laughs> just, just, just going to go straight through the center there. Again, let's just go back to this line that we created earlier. Hold down the ultra option key and drag. And again, makes it slightly harder now because they are slightly closer because of that. But again, I'm just, just about squeezing the center there. Obviously, Again, this will not work for every single bit, any, all the fonts. And again, you can then go here, the move tool, just drag over here and select them all. So it all selected there. And then go up here to the divide again. So just click divide. And now let's just see what we get. What we've got, go here to the move tool and I can select this text. And you can see what happens. You get the split of the curve. It, expands it and breaks it apart, which I think is quite nice. So you can get an extra T if you want. You don't have to have that, of course, but I think it's nice to have. And you can drag that up there and drag that down there and drag that up there, say. So you can create some quite interesting variations of text. And again, now they're all separate. You can just click here and you can recolor that one. Maybe not that color. Let's go for blue so you can see it. Maybe select that one again. 
change the colour there, maybe go with green, and so on. And of course you could select these, change the colour here, stroke, just using the context toolbar. If you can't find that, that's view and context toolbar and show, super useful. And you of course could tweak this and just let's click there and again go with blue. Now, let's see, you can also change that as well. Yes, change the stroke width as well. You can create some quite interesting variations. And of course, the great thing about this is that you've got the T there. Well, just drag it down, just simply drag it down or use various light, obviously arrange it to be below, perfectly reasonable as well. And then you've got a nice sort of blue shadow sort of interesting design that way as well. So you can create some interesting sort of effects with the text, super easy using this nickel. So you get that as well, which is an additional bit, which you can probably, if you don't want that, you can always move it back there. But you could of course group them together so you don't get them separated. And you can see then you can resize that and do other things with the text. So some super interesting sort of text designs, which you can create using this approach. And also, of course, what you can do, let's just do it because we can select them all. And what you can also do is just go up here and click divide again. And you get this, you lose some bits, other bits are still left. So you get, you see, Potentially, you could create some interesting designs by just using this as well. I guess the strokes, obviously, and things are going to result in a slightly different text effect. But text can be changed and tweaked. And of course, I've used just the word text, but it could be a whole line of text, maybe a whole paragraph of text, which you could then split apart. Maybe even a whole page of text. I've never tried that but it's, I guess, quite possible to split pages apart and create interesting text effects that way as well. But of course, the end result will be curves. It's no longer going to be text. You're not going to be able to edit it as text. You can't do images though. I guess you could use the image trace and use that and split that, but you're probably going to create a lot, a lot of paths using that approach. However, let's just go and create something similar to what I had right at the start. So the first thing to do is just create circles. That's all it was based on, circles. So circles, and I'm just gonna create lots of circles. And you can, of course, create them over and over again. Or again, go to the Move tool, hold down the Alter Option key and drag. And you can resize them. So you can have smaller designs, you can make little fragments of designs, maybe make a stained glass window kind of design by having lots of different fragments of this. And it doesn't have to be circles. Of course, you could use all kinds of different shapes. So I'm just going to create a few and resize it. You can make them like ellipse designs if you want and something like that. And then I'm going to have this central, central image. So what I want is the, right at the center. I'm just going to go for this. And it's going to be the biggest thing. All the others I'm not going to particularly be concerned about. This is the thing I'm going to be working on. So again, just go here with the move tool, with that selected, then just drag over all of them. And you can see in the layers now, they're all selected. That's the key thing, all selected. If that's what you want to do, you want to divide them all. Then go here again, here's the divide. Just click there. Once you've done that, you can then see you've got this design here. Well, what you can then do is you can click these ones and change the colors if you want, but you can also click and change the colors here. And I'm just going to quickly go through this one. So I'm just going to go and select each of individually. Now, again, the same problem as before. Sometimes it's very hard to select perhaps some of the shapes. So you might find that it's pretty tricky and you might find and just go, go over here and just select those. And you can see which ones, of course, you've got there. And you can then, let's just go down and get some different colors in the mix. And what I want to do is fill the entire this design here with different colors. And I'm just going to do that. And then I'm just going to go here, purples, etc. And there's obviously loads and loads of colors available here to choose from. Okay, I've colored all the designs, but what you can do with them all selected, just go here to effects, just click there and then go to 3D. And with 3D, you can now change the radius and you can push it up to say 100 using the slider. But you can also, if you want, just turn around and say, oh, I want 300, just enter the value 300 or 500. 
Also, you can then move the direction so you can create different sort of lights there, lighting effects, but also go here to profile. And this is great just for clicking here. And you can see as you do this, you get sort of different dual light designs. I mean, you can go something like this. And again, you can of course modify these settings just by changing this. But you can go with these presets, which I think create some very interesting designs. And once you've done that, click close and you've got that design. Of course, this design can then be grouped all together. So you can select all of them, all selected, and then maybe go there, right click and group. And then you can rasterize it. So again, rasterize it if that's what you want to do and use it maybe with other designs, other effects, etc., in the pixel section. Another thing you could use, a vector flood fill. Vector flood fill tool, select that. And with that, you can set various things here. And I've done a video on this already, how to use this, the insert mode, etc. I'm just going to go with the settings, max fit, etc. And all you can do is just click here and set the color. And in this case, I've already got it filled with something. You can set this by going down here. So just go here. You can set the bitmap just by clicking here and just set it to a particular bitmap. To obviously search for the bitmap. It could be a JPEG, PNG, etc. And once you've got that, you can then of course click here and click here, click here and click here and so on. You can build up images. You can also go maybe for stretch and click there, click there. So on. all kinds of different designs can be created or maybe go with MinFit. Just try different settings. And of course, what you can also do is you can vary the image. So you don't have to go with the same image, just change the image by just clicking here and selecting a different image and using that with some of the remaining ones to build up quite a complex image design. Another tool you could use is the knife tool. Personally, I find that useful for creating some quite abstract designs as well. But the divide, I think, is also super powerful and super easy to use as well. So you might like to try out the knife tool, and I will be doing a video on that at some point. You can also use the pen tool, pencil tool. Just go over there, pencil tool, select it. And with that, you can simply draw just random. It's just, just a squiggle over the entire image. And I'm just creating a very random squiggle there, as you can see. No great design there. Well, once you've got that, what you can do, you can now... Select all of that. Again, it's only obviously two curves there. And then again, go over here and click divide. And with that, you've divided the image and you can see you get a lot of curves. And again, you can simply go here, move tool and select the individual parts and maybe drag this out and create that to create a slightly more abstract design. Super easy, super quick as well in Affinity 3. And that's like that. If you've got any questions or thoughts, please let me know in the comments below. Bye.